in this event coming in the first heat. But in lane one, Scott Crozier of England. In lane number two, Dim Dimitar Sabatinov representing Bulgaria. In lane number three, Benny Chesum of Australia. And in lane number four, Gary Lloyd of USA. We're just missing Gary Lloyd. Gary needs to get a move on if he wants to attempt this. Maybe he's just deciding he's not strong enough to do this event and he's saving his energy, which is a possibility. We have not been told. But I'll tell you what, let's watch Dimitar Savatinov because he will tell us how hard this event is. It's almost like he threw it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the lack of mobility was the hardest thing for them getting in position, but now he's up, he's in his comfort zone. Wow. Six already. Wow. I, I really will put money on this being the winning performance in this heat, in this class. Yeah, he, class. he is for sure going to inch out Heinz 12 reps right now. Ooh. Oh. But he's got more in the tank. Yes. Even that kind of caught him out. He's looking. He was so impressive on the log last year in this contest. And when it came to the power events, always very good. Just lacked a little bit when it came to the throwing and some of the more conditioning type events last year. I've got to say he looks even bigger this year. So maybe he's just focused on being even more powerful. Oh, he is. There's 13. Incredible. Incredible, but not but I'll surprising. Tell you what, it shows how incredible Nicholas Hein was. Yeah, because I, I dare say Dimitar outweighs him by 100 pounds. <laughs> At maybe <least>. more. <laughs> At least. But there we go, 13 repetitions with just shy of 330 pounds. Okay, Gary Lloyd was actually, that was a three-person heat. Gary Lloyd will be stepping into heat number two. That was That's my correct. fault. I saw the heat number right there. So in lane number one, Gary Lloyd of the USA. In lane number two, Richard Minnie of England. Lane number three, Washington Flores of the USA. And in lane number four, Romek Velt of Estonia. Looks like we have two Estonian athletes mm. here in the this, same class. this class. We've got Romek Velt here, and then we have Rauno Heinle later on in our second to last heat with Zadrunas Savikas. Maybe the only man there, Zadrunas, who can uh, challenge Dimitar's 13 reps. We'll no, see. Normally I'd say yes, but from what I've seen with him recently, his pressing hasn't been what it used to be. Unfortunately, I have to agree with you there. Uh, you know, competing I with hope, him at I the Shaw Classic. Wrong. I really do. I hope so, too. But the we last few performances, he's just not been the same man that we're, we're used to seeing. I know he's got a couple of injuries that are holding him back. Um, but I, I, unless he's had an incredible recovery and the last month or so has gone amazing in training, I don't think he'll beat Dimitar's performance. But Big Z is still Big Z, so we, we will you see. You can never, ever count him out. <laughs> you can never. All right, we have Velt already with four reps, just like Flores in lane number three. Flores did not get that fourth, actually. There it is. Felt looking very good. Six repetitions, I believe, for Felt. Flores trying to get that fourth repetition. Gary Lloyd biding his energy. Another athlete with an epic beard. He's, I think he's calling it there. Seven reps for Velt in lane four. Ten seconds left. Seven's going to score good points. That is. Our third heat will be Stefan Bergvist from Sweden in lane one. Albi Mushaini in lane two of the USA. Richard Birchmore of the United Kingdom in lane three. And Danius Repsis of Lithuania in lane number four. Albi Musheni, also known as Big Bad Santa. Yeah, <laughs> he's a good character. I can't. I, I don't know why they call him that. I can't put my finger <laughs> can't on. Can't figure that one out. But he he's he is a character. He's a strong, strong man. I mean, look at him when he turns injury, around. So he he is. He I think is. He's a little bit worried. See, he's got a band around that uh that upper lower leg there, right around the piriformis and hamstring area. You can see from his back profile, just mountains of traps. Yes. And upper back musculature. 
Well, he's, he's got a very strong overhead press. I'm, I'm hoping that his recent bout with recovering from injury does not follow him here to this stage. We always want to see the absolute best in all these athletes here. And the good thing for Big Bad Santa is he'll compete in this contest and then he'll go and do his, his father Christmas job for <laughs> <laughs> November and December. He's right around the corner. It's a good time of year for him. Repsy looking solid in lane number four, already up to four repetitions. Yeah, representing Lithuania, I wonder if he trains with Big Z. Could explain some of that shoulder power hot <laughs> out the gates. I'll be just unable to get any leg drive whatsoever into that press. And it's just a little bit too heavy for him to focus on the strict press. I'm very impressed with Repsy in uh, lane number four there. Six so far. Never seen this guy before, but that's strong. That is. Trying to get some good points there. But 325 pounds, 147 and a half kilos. This is big weight. Three, two, one. Seven. Finishing on seven. That's strong. Heat number four. Kyogen Litchfield of the UK in lane one. Christopher Caso of USA in lane two. Rich the Madness Farrell of New Zealand in lane three. And Manuel Angulo from Chile in lane four. Really looking forward to seeing what Manuel brings out here today. Manny, fresh off of his World's Strongest Man debut this year over in Sacramento. Such a friendly guy as well. Always comes over to everyone to introduce himself, asking for advice. Just wants to get better. He's always got a smile on his face. He's so happy. Well, he doesn't have a smile right now. but He's a man that's <laughs> focused he's, right now. That is not a smile. That, that's not a smile. That's a scary looking face. That's a stone face right there. <laughs> but... He's such a great guy. Such a great guy, and I, I really love watching him operate. He's just Let's making he sure he's understanding the rules from his referee. Now, I want to understand why Rich Farrell is called the madness. Maybe we'll find out right now. Maybe uh, another alter ego comes out when the whistle blows. Yes. Athletes take your position. The madness is off. Manuel gets his first rep. Caso, already with five reps, very utilizing nice. a very wide stance, almost looking like a, an X at lockout. Manny there in lane four is really feeling the weight of that Viking press. He's got one rep. I think the hardest thing for Angulo is actually getting the weight up. You watch his lack of mobility. His shoulders are very tight. Just watch him here. There we go. Very tight in his shoulders. He's a big man. Got a lot of muscle. Very big man. The Chilean mountain, I think they call him. Farrell gets another rep there. Four for him. Seven reps for Castle. That's solid. Heat number five, Peter Rungberg of Sweden in lane one, Alan Colley of the USA in lane two, John Hines of England in lane three, and Jitsi Kramer of Netherlands in lane number four. Alan Colley has now entered the Masters division. He is, he was a pro strongman here in the States. I, I watched him earn his pro card at Nationals, the North American National Championships in 2014 in Reno, Nevada. The longest time he was renowned as one of the nation's strongest yoke walkers. Lives here in Florida. Probably had a very short drive just to get here. I'm, I'm looking forward to what he does because he is very fresh into this Masters so If we see him class. make day two, he'll be looking forward to the car walk. Yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely a strong suit of his. 
Jits Kramer, he's got experience in international competitions. Uh oh. Uh oh, Alan. Oh, uh oh. It's the knee issue there. Uh oh. I think he just felt something go in his knee. Runberg getting oh, two repetitions. Not good to see. Alan Colley is getting hobbling off the stage. There's definitely a pop going on. We'll get some help off. The other athletes moving through. Kramer and Runberg, both two reps on the board. It's always sad to see people get injured. It's unfortunately part of the sport. You're pushing to these extremes. These things do happen. I think maybe a pop in the quad or a knee issue. Hopefully. He felt it right away. Yeah. Lifting it off that dead stop on the ground. I mean, you're thinking of the muscles that are at tension here. He reached for his knees. You know, this is one of the issues with the older athletes, if you like. And I put myself in that kind of category. We're not as flexible as we used to be. The, the, the ligaments and tendons aren't as supple as they used to be. It is a lot easier to get hurt the older we get when we kind of push these extremes. And like we said, these weights in this master's class, this is world's strongest man weight from not that long ago. Yeah. Yep, this is. And uh, it, it will test everyone equally. And like I've been telling everyone this whole weekend, the strongest will be the one who comes out on top. There is no doubt about that. But I, I hope, Alan, it's a, it's a minor injury. You know, we, we really don't want anyone to have to go under the knife to get it fixed, but you hate to see it happen, but it is a reality in this sport. Our sixth heat, Mike Cromer of the USA in lane one, Kip Leitner of the USA in lane two, Tim Phylas of the USA in lane three, and Veli Pekka Kauhainen of Finland in lane number four. Tim Phylas, I remember, I saw him get his pro card at the national North American National Championships in 2016, I believe, or 2015, in Quad Cities, Iowa. A very strong athlete. I, I believe he was still a master's athlete at that time, but decided to compete in the open category and still walked out of there with nice a pro card, making him a, a U.S. pro strongman. But very curious to see how he does. He looks like a powerfully he is a thick set athlete, huge legs, bulldog huge arms. of a man. Yeah, this could suit him. There we go. Once he got up, no problem. Kohanen moving down with the reps, just like Cromer in lane one. Cromer looking strong in lane number one. Look at this, we're on eight reps. Watching Chroma, the hardest thing for him was actually lifting the weight to start with. Once he was up, his pressing was phenomenal. That's how he gets up this time. Oh, I see Tim walking off. So the... wide to get. There we go. He's up. Wow. He, he fought for that. It was. Cannonan is on five reps. Three. Make that six. That's that is really so good. cool to see them come back for that last rep yes. after biting their power. I, I hope Tim's okay. I saw him step off of that as well, just reaching for his shoulder. He's definitely feeling something not right there. But he did get a point. Our seventh heat, Doug Madewell of USA in lane one. Matt Gary in lane two, Ryan Rhodes in lane three, David Bay here in lane four. All four athletes from the USA. Doug Madewell owns Madewell Strength Equipment. He makes some really cool stuff. I recently got some deadlift bar extensions from him to help me train for the, the Hummer Tire Deadlift, the Shaw, the Shaw Classic. Nice. Strap them on the end of the bar, make your bar longer. Really cool. He, he makes some good gear, but a proven and tried athlete, a veteran to the sport. Let's see how he does here today. The current score to beat is still Big Bad Dimitar with 13 repetitions. A hard, hard fought challenge for any athlete willing to claim it.
Madewell looking very solid in lane number one. There's three reps already. Taking a breather. Rhodes has managed one rep. Four for Madewell. Bayer on two in lane number four. Ten seconds remain. It's now or never. And that fatigue threshold is just there for all of the athletes. Five reps is very solid, though. That's going to be good points. It is. He had some good momentum right there at the whistle. Our eighth heat, Randy Cole, lane number one of the USA. Jonathan Coy of the USA in lane two. Big Z, Zadrunas Saviskas of USA, of Lithuania, I'm sorry, in lane three. And Rauno Heinle of Estonia in lane four. Big Z and Rauno. This will be a fun one. So Big Z sporting the beard. I was going to say, it's, my, my wife said the other night that she saw Big Z but didn't recognize him at first because of the beard. And, uh, he is looking big as well. Yeah, the, the, the stature of that man is just... Almost, almost like he commands his own orbit. He's got such a unique walk as well. You just know, you'll just see like the shadow of Z coming past you and you know it's him. <laughs> I will say the same about his voice. Whenever Big Z opens up his mouth to talk, the room quiets and everyone listens. <laughs> yeah. But I like the beard, it looks good. It looks good on him. Let's see what Z and Rauno can do here. Can they challenge that Rano 13 reps from Dimitar focused. Sabatino? Rauno coming off of a victory at the World Deadlift Championships in Wales on, off of the, for the deadlift. Yeah, he's a supreme deadlifter. Solid on Viking Press. He'll be looking to score good points here. Like Heinler is powering out these early reps. This is looking good. And I think we were right in what we called about Zadrunas. He's not the presser he once was. Still dangerous, still capable of picking up points but I'm pretty sure Dimitar is very safe. Rauno, banging him out. Cole is on one rep, Coy is on two. Zaviskas on six repetitions. Rauno hits nine, puts himself into second place. Zaviskas on eight, that will put him into joint third. Oh, Rano just fell short of getting that Rano knockout. Rano couldn't get that tenth, but it's not going to make a difference overall in terms of positions. Thank you. So we're being fed. That's um, what's happening right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long day for us. Chicken tenders. Oh, man. Good stuff. Thank you. It's nice to be looked after, isn't it? It is. <laughs> we are getting pampered here today. Yes. yes. Well taken care. Everything is, like you said, a, a well-oiled and run machine here at the official Strongman Games. Every angle, every corner, every turn. So I think Rano ended on nine. I think Zadrunas was eight. Zadrunas also got nine. Yeah, they both wound up tying. He got, uh, unless, unless I am mistaken, I saw nine on that scoreboard. We'll have to get the official will, score. As always, we'll bring you those official scores after. We have In a lane number one. Heat. James Stenko of the USA. Lane number two, Chris Porter. Lane three, Matt Webb. And lane four, Danny Strinsett. All four athletes of the USA. So they know the targets to beat. Can they put themselves in challenging positions? I have competed with James Stenko before, before he went into the Masters category. He is not, has not been a Masters athlete for long, so I'm expecting big things. But look at Webb just moving through as well. We've got... Points on the board. Webb looking really solid there in lane number three. Stanko on three reps. Good rep again by Webb. He's looking powerful when he's under there. Seems to burn out quickly and need to take a bit of recovery time, but 
once he's under, looking very strong. He's got eight reps. Wow. And that's, it's, he's one rep away from Big Z and Rauno. I think he's got time. Here we go. Webb. This will be huge points for Webb if he gets this. And it wasn't a problem. He's got more in him. Can he get the tenth? He's working hard. Locks it out. Good work. Wow. Excellent performance there by Matt Webb. He is I think that puts him into second place overall. What a big, strong man. Just nailed it. Thanks. So we will bring you the official results from our Masters as soon as we have them. We have one more class left. It's the biggest class of the day, the open weight category. Very quickly, let's go through these results. From the over 40s, Dimitar Savatinov, 13 repetitions, taking the win. Matt Webb, second place on 10 reps. And then we have Zadrina Saviskas and Rauno Hainler tied for third place, both with nine repetitions. Mike Cromer on eight, Romark Velt and Danis Raspis on seven, as is Christopher Casso. And then we move on to Veli Pekka, who had... I just missed out the reps there, but we go through four. Number of athletes on three. Yeah, sorry, six reps there for Canavan. Doug Madewell on five. And then the madness, Rich Farrell on four. Washington Flores on three. Three reps for a number of athletes there. A number of athletes on two. Big Bad Santa with one repetition. Angulo on one, a couple of other athletes there on one, then a few athletes unable to lift the extremely heavy Viking press. Once again, a good example of how important it is to really just fight for even that one repetition. When you have a number of athletes tying for that zero, it, you know, the points are split. It, the, the amount of placings that the athletes take up, if there's four athletes taking up you know, places two through four, those points get added up and they get averaged, and that's yeah. how you wind up getting the points there. So it, you, you got to really give it your all. If you know you're capable of one, pour it out and try to yeah. get that thing. Is that the next list for us? Yeah, we have – this is our men's open category, the Giants this, Live Qualifier. This is a, an important The victor category. here with this category will wind up earning their spot to Giants Live. Yeah. That is the now direct path to World's Strongest how, how Man. How many athletes have we seen? Class. Scott Crozier of England. Benny Chesum of Australia. Chesum, that weight just pries itself Chesum. from his fingers off the get-go. Scott Crozier from England, moving down on his return. He has the likes of Dimitar, Sabatina of Rauno Heinle and Zadruna Saviskas yet to come. But I'm seeing a hand torn. I'm seeing an open callus. He's giving it his all, but the skin is gone. And that's it. Look, we can see on the screen that talus is ripped right off. When the hands give, it, it's it becomes nearly impossible uh, to hold on when, when those calluses open up. The chalk in instantly becomes like mud and starts slipping yeah. from, the, from the bud. But he got some distance, finished about 75% of the course. We'll see how that stacks up with everyone, but distance is points. This is a very going to be a very interesting group of uh, guys to watch because um, we got some of the top level in the world uh, from even like we got Judah Nusaviskas who is uh, often argued as the GOAT of strongman the best of all time four time world strongest man uh, going up against just frankly uh, 
gentlemen of all sorts of skill levels and experiences. It's great to see Dimitar back in the arena. It's fantastic seeing Dimitar and how strong he is still. Yeah, yeah there's no joke there. But heat number two steps onto the field. We have Richard Minnie of England in lane one, Stefan Bergvist of Sweden in lane two, Richard Birchmore of the UK in lane three, and Kyogen Litchfield of the UK in lane four. We got Bergvist taking the lead in, in this heat, being patient with it, just going for the completion, not the fastest time. It'll still get him good points if he makes it to this finish line. And it's coming down to grip, endurance, and strength. In about 10 seconds. He's going to have to pick this fast. There's no time to wait if he wants to get this finish. He's going to have to dive. And oh, he's so just close. Shy. Just by shy of a that. couple inches. You know, I was hoping for that picture perfect finish right there. And look at that as we zoom in. Just that must be just right there on the line. <laughs> so close. But but still what an effort with his grip failing constantly to be able to just rest it up enough to be able to repick it and go a little bit of a distance at a time with each pick. I was hoping we would see the first finish of the uh, of this class. I, I was hoping so too. I liking this technique from our movers here. They're, they're rolling the implements on their sides and using them like wheels, very Finst Flintstone esque. <laughs> but you know, it's it's almost it's like the, they were designed for this. Yeah, yeah, I love it. When you got smooth floors, you know, you take advantage of it. Work smarter, not harder. You know, there's there's a bit of blood on the field from some open hands, but our current leader, Stefan Bergvist with 99 feet and two inches, barely short of the full 100 feet. Up next. He's getting a little bit of cleanup in lane one. Heat number three will begin with John Hines of England in lane one, Kip Leitner of USA in lane two, Matt Garee of USA in lane three, and Chris Porter, USA in lane number four. One Englishman and four Americans, or three Americans. Look, we got uh, Leitner taking off. Beautiful run. Definitely going to be going for the finish and even probably going to be getting one of the top times. This is a smooth and good run. Followed uh, closely by Gary. So, oh, no, I take it back. Slow down. Gary takes the lead in this heat. Wow. The first to complete the course. Ah, if Leitner only kept up that same pace, but his grip eventually gave up out 75% of the way through. Hines closing in on that first length. You can see just how much that back is getting taxed. You know, that upper this, back starting to have to be doing deadlifts for repetitions. <laughs> and so sandbags the shoulder after that. It's going to be one of those days tomorrow where they're going to wake up feeling like a very different person. Maybe not in the best the, way. And the most taxing thing of farmers is the pick, frankly. Once you get the strides, your, skel your skeleton's stacked, and it's just a matter of uh, skill and precision, making sure you stay stable and you have the grip. Uh, but that to have to re-pick that way over and over and over again, that's going to be burning uh, him out moving forward into the it playoffs. is especially if you're moving throughout the whole duration of that 60 second clock but matt gary our new leader clear in the course in 22.87 seconds solid solid and a strong pace to set not too many are going to beat that time you know you and i both saw when we we all competed together at worlds this year Manuel Angulo did very well on that uh, wrecking ball hold, so he does have the grip strength. He 
Yes. I'm very curious to see That's how right. his grip strength and motion here on the farmer's walk looks. We shall see. That that cannonball hold was an animal of its own. <laughs> it was. <laughs> a unique event that I hope I personally don't have to repeat. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> I, I don't want to ever have to do that again. But, you know, we have uh, Big Bad Santa in lane number one, Manny Angulo in lane two, Tim Phyllis in lane three. Phyllis blasting off. And Ryan Rhodes in lane four. Finishing the first half of the lane. And Tim and Manny neck and neck with each other. Phyllis and Anugulo heading back. Very good pace, steady speed. Wow. Phyllis takes the win in this heat. Manny right there behind him. And Albi Mosheni, Big Bad Santa, is right there at the finish line. So close. Needs to get the other one over. Come on. There, he gets it. He clears the distance, gets the course done. Ryan Rhodes getting some distance on the return. It'll be a measurement for him. What a run between Tim and Manny. Great power, great strength, and a good stride between them both. Tim Phyllis, I'm hearing on the loudspeaker, is our new leader. That's still a really good time for Manuel Angulo. And Manny was right there behind him. And 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 Manny from uh, Chile, he's, he's another uh, one of those guys that had to kind of figure out a lot of this stuff on his own. And it's very impressive to see him competing at this caliber, um, basically having had to put it all together on his own. Yeah, yeah. It's It was great getting to spend a lot of time with him there at Worlds in Sacramento this year and getting to hear about how his his training up to that moment had been and it's the strongman realm in South America is a, a very interesting one to say that to try to navigate. You know, it is very different than what we have here stateside. But you know, he is contending with the top level here, and he contended with the top level there in Sacramento. And he's such a humble guy, such a happy guy. He's stone faced when he's in competition. <laughs> yeah, but, but he's, he's actually one of the nicest guys out on the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. All right, Cole. Lane one, Lloyd, lane two, Runberg in lane three, and Kramer in lane four. It looks like Lloyd is a no-show. Possibly got Kramer on the of press. Netherlands taking the win of the heat. With Runberg trailing closely, and he gets it. Cole just fatiguing and dropping those handles. Seeing that upper back really start to take a, take a hit. Randy Cole right there at that finish line. Boom. Gets it. Jitsi Kramer, 17.63 seconds as our new leader. That's very impressive. I've competed against Jitsi before. Um, he's a phenomenal deadlifter, but he, he almost, he doesn't wear a belt when he deadlifts, at least when I was competing against him. And uh, he would basically do a Romanian deadlift all the way up, almost completely locked legs, just pure hip hinge. <laughs> and he would get over 900 pounds like that. Incredible. You gotta respect that posterior chain strength. It's out of this world. He told me that's the only way he could figure out how to do do it. So if you, each individual has a way that it works for them. But we have Stinson, Flores, Bayer, and Coy on the field in their lanes respectively. Flores and Bayer running neck and neck, clearing that first length together, and Flores inches ahead. All gentlemen from USA and Flores taking the win of the heat. Wow. David Bayer right behind him. Washington Flores, our leader of this heat, looked very strong. A lot of momentum moving through that course. Oh, 
Stinson getting some breath just for those last, that last attempt taking, deciding to call it there. Save that energy rather than rushing through a pick. Okay, moving on to heat number seven in our men's over 40 division. James Stenko, USA in lane one. Rich the Madness, Farrell of New Zealand in lane two. Doug Madewell, USA in lane three. And Veli Pekka Kauhanen of Finland, wow, Finland in lane four. You, uh, you said that very beautifully. Oh, thank you, sir. And I'd like to think I'm getting better at some of these harder to pronounce names, but you know, it's a, uh, a beautiful day when you have so many new names from all over the world come together. Uh, that's absolutely right. Challenging the commentators to their full extent. <laughs> and it is a challenge. James Stanko stepping onto the field looking ready to rock and roll. Competed with him in the past. I think the last time I competed with him was at the Arnold World Championships as an amateur in 2019. Or 2020. 2019. I think. <laughs> it's great to see these guys return and still it is. giving it their all. It is. I love it. And really putting on a good show. Showing us that they still got power, work, capacity, and drive. And look at Stenko. Looking cool and collected and cruising. Needs to be quick on that pick because Farrell... The Madness is right behind him. Stanko's looking good. There's a little bit of a wobble, feet crossing over one another, but he's holding on and staying steady. And, and he, he gets it. it. Finishes right in the nick of time. He is happy with that. He looked us straight in lap. the eyes as he celebrated. That was a special moment. James Stanko, our heat winner there. We'll see what his time is like. I don't think it was fast enough to beat Kramer but definitely fast enough to get some good points on the board. Three, two, one. Doug Madewell dug deep right there. And deep and just barely shy of that finish line. He'll get a measurement very close to the 100-foot mark. It is absolutely fascinating watching this group, just seeing all the different levels of ability some guys crushing it and some guys are having a really hard time of it heat number eight second to last heat romic velt of estonia in lane one danius repsis lithuania in lane two christopher Caso, usa in lane three and mike cromer usa in lane four Oh, this is exciting for me because I'm, uh, guys, I'm from Latvia and both Estonia and Lithuania are neighboring countries of mine. So it's going to be exciting for me to watch Romek Velt and Danius Repsis from Lithuania. Repsis, that little accent right there. Repsis. Got it, got it. I'm, I'm learning. Yeah, there's some strong European strength here. We got some Baltic power right now about to go. I hope these guys represent well and take it the whole way. I have no doubt they will. They've already proven themselves to be among the top after the Viking press. Velt moving very fast down the course. Already halfway there. And he's so fast off the line coming back. Ref, she's he just right needs to him. stay steady and he's going to complete it. Look oh, at that. Yes, look at Velt go. We might have an excellent a, finish we by the two Baltic men, making me proud. You called it. That Baltic power is all too real, all undeniable. And Cromer digging deep. Just going for that finish, whatever it takes. I like he had that chalk under his shorts there, ready. Should Clever he need little it. trick. I'm going to take it. And his hands have lost it. Once no it goes, it goes. Power. Really cute. Velt, 18.16 seconds, just barely shy of catching Kramer with his 17.63. But, but still enough to stay in the top. Just about half a second away at 18.16 seconds. 
and we have our final heat. Here we, we go. got some big names, Martins. We, we have some legends here. Zudruna Savitskas of Lithuania. This is the, known as the GOAT, four time world's strongest man. We got Rauno Heinla from Estonia. Uh, I've competed against Rano. He's a monster. He's one of those I. smaller guys, but still is an over 1,000 pound deadlifter that still to this day is pushing to break the world record. Uh, Matt Webb of USA, Dimitar Sabatinov of Bulgaria, also one of the best, well, was one of the best dumbbell pressers in the world, uh, held the world record until Mateusz Kieliszkowski from Poland beat him. Matt Webb used to be a client of mine as well, so I'm really He's excited. a strong guy out there in the West Coast. World's strongest Matt, I believe. Look at Savitskas taking off. Oh, beautiful, steady strides. Got All those forward. years of experience showing us there is... It, that, that is... It looks like it's floating that way. I've never seen a big man glide so smoothly. That was just... Wow. Beautiful. That was Dimitar a Dimitar just art. barely behind him. Absolutely. I'm really liking this bearded oh, Big Z. He, me too. I think that this is the look he was missing for too many years, and he's finally accepted that's the way to be. I don't see a single gray hair in that beard. How look, is looking, possible? Looking as, useful, possible? as youthful as ever. <laughs> Heinle. No, Rano really is phenomenal at so many events, and I've talked to him multiple times about this. He really struggles. At getting his grip up to par. And any competition that there's grip in, he's always nervous about that event. Still and clears loses a lot of points. Clears over 75% of the course, but I know he wants more. Zadrunas with 18.22 seconds. That is a good enough placing for third, I believe. But barely shy of Romek Velt of Estonia with his 18.16. And Jutzi Kramer of the Netherlands, the leader, 17.63 seconds, finishing ahead of Big Z. What a great showing. I am just so happy to see these guys coming back. And, you know, Dimitar was right there behind Big Z, too. He might, he, he certainly has a time under that 20-second mark, if I am correct, from what my eyes saw. But we'll wait for the official scores to be posted. And then up next, we have our final weight class of the day, our men's open division. I, I've also I've been missing Dimitar in competition. Me too. Because when I Me started too. off, I was competing against Dimitar, and, and I, I definitely looked up to him, especially for his overhead uh, pressing prowess. And um, it, it's cool. He, he went away for a little while. He uh, did, but he's back, and he's and back he's with a sub-20 second run right there. Look at that. Awesome. Dimitar stuff. in fourth place with 18.74, following behind Big Z with 18.22, Romic Velt 18.16, and Yitzi Kramer in first place, 17.63. Looking at 5 through 10, all within less, all within two seconds of each other, seemingly. You know, these, these are another tight spread group of the top placers here. Five seconds and two tenths about separate one through ten there. Incredible strength. We got places eleven through twenty on the board as well. Sixteen athletes in that men's over forty division wind up finishing the entire course with another two athletes just inches away. And now we have our men's open our men's open class. These are the athletes. The one that I am looking for to the most is going to be Rano Heinle coming up in the fourth heat. He came out as the winner at the World Deadlift Championships, pulling the highest weight on the deadlift bar there. And, uh, you know, deadlift strength doesn't stop at a barbell. It does carry over to an axle, but we'll, we'll see. I've seen Rano hit nine reps on a 360 deadlift on an axle. I'm convinced we see double figures from Rano on this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. And, you know, he, he definitely will want to make up some points after that farmer's walk. But Chesson, Porter, Litchfield, and Coy on the field in their respective lanes. We have one rep out of both lanes one and two, zero on three, and four reps out of Coy on lane number four. Coy looking very strong there at the end. And he hits number five. He's got time for a six. He just needs to stay on his feet. Five, two, six, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. No, there's not enough time. Oh, he was close. 
He just stayed on the he ground the a little power. too long. He did. He did. He's probably going to, that's, that's going to haunt him, you know, but. All right, heat number two, Richard Minning of England in lane one. Lane two, Christopher Castle, USA. Lane three, Danny Stinson, USA. Lane four, Richard Birchmore, the UK. Birchmore, first one to lock out a rep in this heat. He's looking very strong there in lane number four. Good technique, pulling nice, smooth reps. Hips come through, that's four reps already. The rest of our field looking hard pressed to get a second rep. Castle and Mini both managing one. Stinson unable to get that bar off the floor so far. And all the athletes are tanked. Four reps These for guys are going to be feeling it now. It's been such a long day. Although it's only been three events, in a strongman competition, you tend to give 100% on every event. And then with that long gap, suddenly your body starts to stiffen up. And it does. You start to feel it. It does. And muscles are going to be cramping up for a lot of people here. And, you know, this really challenges the athlete from a new point of view in terms of strategy. Yeah. What, in, what techniques are they going to employ to be able to last a whole day like this? You know, it, it's... A lot of athletes may not have ever had to deal with a long day of this nature before. But, again, this is the same day for everyone. Everyone has the same issue. You've got to be able to cope. You've got to be able to adapt. That is a key component of being a great athlete. In any sport, not just strongman. Agreed. Adaptability. Malleability. You know, getting, be able to react to a situation on the fly. All right, lane number three. Hines in lane one, Rhodes in lane two, Crozier in lane three, and the Madness Farrell in lane number four. England, USA, England, and New Zealand. And you are really feeling that shudder as the weight goes down now. Yeah, yeah, it is a... Crozier an impact. Gets rep number three. Farrell so close. Can he get those hips through? Yes, he gets the down signal. You know, some of these neoprene shorts, I always see it. They like to bite down on that bar and almost try to grab to it in a way that makes it a little bit harder sometimes. Some athletes like to use the leggings, don't they? So you get yeah. that nice smooth yeah. pull. I have seen some athletes wear sweatpants or, or some other pants to really just make a low friction environment right there on the thigh as it comes up. As we want as little friction as possible. The smoother that bar travels, the better. Yeah, that's why sometimes you will see baby powder employed, but I think baby powder might have been taken out of being allowed in this one. I'm not sure. So Originally it was allowed, but I haven't really seen anyone, although there is one of our athletes coming out now who looks like he may have baby powder on his quads. Rauno Heinle. We're going to see some big reps out of Rauno. Rauno's in a position where he's going out early. He's going to have to put down a number. Mm -hmm. Heinlein lane number two. Lane Pick number one will be Kalhanen of Finland, lane three, Cromer of USA, and lane four, Bergfist of Sweden. Pick a number. How many is Rauno going to hit? I'm going to say 12. Yeah, the current lead is five so far. 45 seconds is not a long time. 12 will be a great target to hit. So the weight is not an issue for Rauno. It's just how many can he do in this time limit. Let's remember, Rauno Heiner has lifted the most weight on a barbell in strongman this year. Hey, he's a showstopper. All he's the other a master's <laughs> world record holder and one of the biggest pulls of all time. Ten repetitions, 11, 12. He hits your target and he's still going. How much time do we have left? 13 reps. And he's going to leave it there. Wow. Uh, sorry, Ronald, for underestimating you and calling 12 <laughs> when you got 13. But I think you did pretty well. Just with that. Uh, incredible power. Really making up some points. And anyone who dares to try to beat him out is going to walk out of I, here I, with I some I don't feels. think anyone beats that. I don't, I don't know if anyone wants to beat him. No. <laughs> That is going to be a sore man if they even attempt. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think Rano is going to be phased by that. I think he is one of the few men who can come out here, do 
13 reps on 660 and still How smooth walk out of here was on every skate. single rep as well. His lockout is so nice technically. I would love to see a side-by-side -side replay of reps 1 and reps 13. You know, taking out that pause that he did before, but yeah, you know, it's just crazy. But look, Big Bad Santa looks like he's wearing himself on his leggings there. <laughs> you got to love that. I think you get a little bit of extra power when you wear a version of yourself on, on your clothes. But we have what looks like a Burger King crown on lane, lane number one. Doug Madewell wearing a crown, hopefully. Kind of reminds me, you're probably a bit young, but a wrestler called Rick Rude. Oh, I, I am aware. Himself on his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> As big a statement as any. Two reps out of Matt Webb. Matt Webb's a fantastic athlete. Very good all-round strong man. He's a very big man. Very strong. Trains out of California on the West Coast. Just a solid performer. You know, a real good athlete. Madewell looks like he's got some kind of crown on his head yeah that's it looks like he may have gone picked up a burger at the burger king and asked for the happy meal just for the crown to wear on the deadlift day seven reps there for webb very solid all right moving on to let's see heat number six Peter Runberg of Sweden in lane one, Kip Leitner of USA in lane two, Matt Gary, USA in lane three, and David Bayer, USA in lane number four. All men strapped up to the bar, ready to take 660 for a ride. Runberg from Sweden gets the first rep, no problem. Gary also gets a good rep. Bears on three. Bear has that torque off the ground with each rep. Looking good, but he unstraps. You and I talked about this. This is 45 seconds, you know, unstrapping just shortens your workload. What, what straps would you have gone for? Would you have gone for standard straps or figure of eights on the axle? Figure eights on an axle, especially yeah, as slick I, as this. I agree. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of figure of eights, but when it comes to an axle, they are definitely the choice to go for. When it comes to an axle, when it comes to a slippery axle, nonetheless, and when it comes to a slippery axle for max reps, yes. you just want to be absolutely locked in. But any With other straps, if that, that strap starts to slip, you just cannot apply any of the power. Yeah. At least with the figure of eights, they lock in, and you don't have to worry about that grip. Yeah, and dead weight off the ground. You need, you need that dead grip lock too. But here we have Manuel Angulo of Chile in lane number one. Lane number two, Washington Flores of USA. Lane number three, Danius Repsis of Lithuania, and lane number four, Tim Phylis, USA. Talking to Manuel, I think he's picked up a slight hip issue. But he's powerful. He's the in Chilean the wrong position mountain. from the start, but just the sheer power that he has it makes the rep no problem. It's a real raw talent, this guy. There's lots of strength there. That's the second rep I've seen in a row where he's pulled from quite a distance in front of him. Technically, there's lots of room to improve, but he's got plenty of power. I was speaking to him earlier, and he has, he's feeling big, he told me. He, he has bulked up a little bit from World's Strongest Man earlier this year, carrying around a little bit of extra body weight, and maybe that might be a reason for the posture changes. But what, this whole group really performing well. Seven reps, eight reps, seven reps, and now seven reps again. Nine reps for Angulo on lane one. Wow, that was a... Very impressive heat. We've got nine reps for Angulo and then eight repetitions for our other three athletes. Angulo looks like he's almost <laughs> in a bit in shock there. He's in a daze. Yeah. Someone nine get this man reps. some carbs. A Rice crispy, anyone? I'll tell you what, he's got plenty of power. He does. He does. He is strong. I say a, a mountain of a man. Huge man. <laughs> Hailing from Chile right along the Andes Mountains in South America. So respectful of all the other athletes. But here we go, we've got two big, big names in the strongman world. 
Sabatin of former America's Strongest Man, former dumbbell world record holder. A great deadlifter. An absolute powerhouse in every sense of the word. Saviskas in lane two, Velt in lane three. Kramer when it comes to power, Zadruna Saviskas, just an absolute beast. The Dimitar wanting to be untouchable, but Kramer answering the call at the very end there in lane four. Kramer is a very good deadlifter as well. Oh, Dimitar just pulling up there. He's on six pretty quickly, but I think he's cramping up. Uh, he, it looks like a cramp. You, you don't twist like that unless there's a cramp going on. And Kramer's looking really strong. Hits double figures. That's 10 reps for Jits Kramer. 11 reps. He's challenging Rauno. Can he get two more? He gets a 12th. Zadruna still going. I think Rauno's safe. And did, did Zadrinus hit that ninth rep? I'm not sure that he... Oh, yes, the referee gives it to him. Nine reps for Zadrinus. Jits Kramer won 12 repetitions. And Dimitar was looking so good until he started to cramp oh, no. there after that sixth rep. That is one of the things with a long day like this, and it affects us all. Veterans and newcomers to the sport alike, you need to always be on top of your body with hydration, mineral balances, food intake, especially on long days. Even if you're not expending your energy sitting down, the body maintaining all of its processes is burning water and burning nutrients. Moving to our men's open. The big boys vying for that Giants Live spot. We are going to move up to our heaviest weight bar of the evening, 700 pounds, 317 and a half kilos on the axle bar. There's our results from our Masters athletes. Rauno Hainler getting a very important win, 13 reps. Jitz Kramer on 12, fantastic performance there. And Manuel and Zadrunas both tying on nine reps apiece. I bet, I bet Manny's happy about that, tying with Big Z on the deadlift. That's, That's going to feel good. Yeah, that, that, I would feel good. Repsis and Flores and Phyllis all tying with eight reps. Matt Webb with seven, Dimitar Sabatinov with six, and Romek Velt with five. We have a four-way tie with those five reps between Velt, Bayer, Runberg, and Coy. Four reps for Birchmore, a three-way, or a two-way tie for three reps with Farrell and Crozier. These athletes can go and rest. The men's over 40s, the GOAT, Zadrina Saviskas, proving once again why he's the GOAT, still performing. I think he's 47 years old now. He's in the over 40s, 98 points. Dimitar Savatinov, despite that cramp on the deadlift, still holds on to second place. And Danus Rapsis on 89 points. Jitz Kramer, 87 and a half. Velt on 87 and a half. Matt Webb, 84. Rauno on 83 and a half. Washington Flores, 81 and a half points. Tim Phyllis on 75. And Manuel Angulo from Chile on 74 and a half. We'll get back to some scores in a little while, but we have our men's over 40 division up next. The same bag series from 275 all the way to 350. Litchfield, Breakfast, Rhodes, and Leitner in their respective lanes. Looks like we will have a vacant lane number two. Leitner gets the first bag, as do our other two athletes. Leitner of the USA in lane number four, moving well down the course. And taking a little bit of time that Lich, he does not have. Litchfield manages the second bag as well. Look at Leitner. It is all about this third bag for him. He needs to get it. Less than 10 seconds remain. And, off. and there's the down. He gets it. There we go. I think he should be very pleased with that. Doing what he needs to do for good scoring. Heat two, Danny Stinson, USA lane one. Albi Mushaini, Big Bad Santa in lane number two. Lane number three, Veli Pekka Kauhanen of Finland in lane number three. And James Stenko, USA Lane number four. Oh, 
Big Bad Santa prepping for the holidays to come and carrying his big red bag full of goodies for all the good <laughs> girls and boys. He needs to warm up those muscles for all that holiday cheer. <laughs> James Stenko, lane number four. These athletes are all struggling with these. Well, that's a 300-pound bag, Laws. If uh, 300 pounds of why I should not leave the ground. But yeah. these men do not want to stop. Looks like Albie Moshaney there in lane number two. He's showing a little bit of signs of residual strain from past injuries. I don't think we see all any man get the second bag. Not in this heat. It is tough. It is a big bag. It just shows you how crazily good that performance by Andrew Clayton was. <laughs> he wants that Giants life spot. Or he, he well, he's not going to get in the 105s, but he's been there before. And that, that's what hardens the metal to where he is able to really know not to stop in between each bag. You know, he's been at that highest level as a heavyweight. Yeah. He wants the crown as a 105 kg world's strongest man. And who knows what's yet to come afterwards. But seeing Andrew Clayton step back into the arena and give a jaw-dropping performance was incredibly inspiring. All four of our athletes here looking solid on the first sandbag. And I think we're going to see some get this second one as well. Porter in lane number three is good with sandbag number two. And he's off. <laughs> he's happy with that. Interesting. He looked good. And he manages sandbag number two. Wow. Good battle there by Kramer. And Kramer there at the very end. Can you, there's no, no wonder why this man has such a strong neck. Did you see all 300 pounds of that bag just crushing his head to the side right there. He's, just, he's a thickly set man. Huge legs, huge arms, huge neck. Just, just a lot traps of power for there. days there. 300 pound bag, no match. Okay, moving on. To heat number four, Matt Gary, USA in lane one, Christopher Casso, USA in lane two, John Hines of England in lane three, and Doug Madewell in lane number four. Doug Madewell has the beard braided and out of the way today, ready to move some sandbags up to the shoulder. Look at Gary in lane number one, closest to us. Looking very good. Very clean. And Gary's up to the lap. He can do this. Oh, he's just losing it slightly. Wow, Gary, all three bags. As does Madewell. Gary and Madewell, both getting that third bag. Strong individuals. And we have some more strength yet to come. Our fifth heat, Scott Crozier of England in lane one. Rich the Madness Farrell of New Zealand lane two. Richard Birchmore of UK in lane three. And Jonathan Coy, USA, lane four. Bicep there, I think, in lane one, Crozier went to pull that first sandbag and straight away he's gone to his bicep. Oh, Laz, we, unfortunately, we know what that feels like. Yeah, oh. It's a horrible feeling. You know, and sandbags are one of the events in Strongman that unfortunately are infamous for putting that bicep tendon under terrible strain. I can see by the, the facial expressions, it's not good, but we have Birchmore, Cho Coy, and Farrell moving on to that third bag. He gets it. <laughs> Farrell oh. 
also uh, grabbing the bicep. What? Let's hope he's okay. Oh, he's okay. Oh. He's okay. Yeah, he, he flexed that he's bicep. Fine. But <laughs> May number one, yeah. I, I really hope Scott Crozier of England, I, I think that bicep went. He's definitely looking at the bicep. It's just the worst feeling when you feel that bicep pull up your arm. You know straight away. There's, there's no mistaking that feeling. And it is something that we, we never want to come across. But, you know, this sport likes to claim biceps. It, it really does. Big objects, lots of strain. Dimitar, there was talk of him pulling out, but he is still here. Peter Runberger, Sweden Lane 1. David Bayer, USA Lane 2. Romek Velt of Estonia, Lane 3. And the mighty midco, Dimitar Savatinov. Bulgaria in lane four. And I'll tell you what, Velt's been really impressive all contests so far. Absolutely. He is right there, He's setting the good. pace right along with Runberg. Runberg 17 off, narrowly behind. Dimitar also moves on to sandbag number three. We know Dimitar can shoulder a tremendous weight. He held the circus dumbbell world record for quite some time before Mateusz Kuzkowski took it from him. He's a real powerhouse. Look at Runberg in lane one. Onto this massive 350. Can we see our first master lift this huge sandbag? He's got the arm length. Oh, oh, he's just, just losing pulls it. Free. I see Dimitar limping off a little bit, maybe a hip strain. Yeah, that was a solid performance there by the Swede. Dimitar looking a bit stiff, hobbling off the field. Well, he was talking of him pulling out yesterday. He strained something in his groin quad area on the exactly deadlift. where he's he's grabbing. But he's a battle. He doesn't want to give up yet. Our second to last heat. Matt Webb, of USA Lane 1. Tim Filas of USA in Lane 2. Washington, Florida is USA Lane 3. And Danius Repsis, Lithuania Lane 4. A strong heat. Both yeah. Matt and Tim Filas are going to give each other a run for their money. But these other two athletes are here in the second to last heat for a reason. They have really performed on day one and carry some fire aiming for the finals here on day two. Matt Webb, the first to shoulder the, the big 275 Matt onto the three. Really good with that first sandbag. Can he maintain that speed through sandbag wow. number two and sandbag number three? If Very he can move as well with this one, he's got a chance. Look and he'll have the time. This is a real... All three bags look the same. That's the way to do it. Now what's he going to do? He's changing technique for the third, uh, fourth sandbag, sorry. Needs to get his hands underneath, and he does. Big man, long arms. He's going to do this. Wow. Gets it. Matt yes. Webb. And that was quick as well. Matt All Webb. four bags. Incredible strength by Matt Webb there. And what power. our leader. Wow. Matt Webb. Just incredible. Those first three bags, Laws, they looked, even though they were increasing in weight, all three bags looked exactly the same. Romak, always wandering around. <laughs> always meandering with camera in hand, ready to get some snapshots to show the world what happens here. So we've got our final heat, four athletes. Lane number one, Manuel Angulo of Chile. Lane number two, Zadruna Saviskas, Lithuania. Lane number three, Yitzi Kramer, Netherlands. Lane number four, Rauno Heinle, Estonia. Who can follow Webb's power? Big Z is up. Heinle is first, though. All four men advance to the second going bag. well through the first two sandbags. Yitz and Zadruna not far behind. Heinle having to really feel the pressure to make up some points after the farmer's walk and yesterday. Heinle just ahead of Zadrunas. Zadrunas just stumbling a little bit of balance. Zadrunas looks over at Heinle, knows the pressure is on. Ten seconds. Do they have time to get this? Heinle. Heinle's close. Needs to thrust it up. He's close. And he gets it. Oh, wow. Wow, oh. that is going to be big points for Heinle. Heinle needed those points. He did. And that was a very narrow finish. He did get the down command from his judge. That would put Heinle behind Matt Webb in a second place, if I'm, un, if I I'm not mistaken. So. Matt Webb was unbelievable. Real class act in that contest. Look, we see Angulo and Saviskas sharing some words of brotherhood there. 
Two World's Strongest Man competitors, the GOAT and the Chilean Mountain. <laughs> wow. And here we have our results from the over 40s. Matt Webb with that fantastic performance that we just witnessed. Raul O'Hanler, second place for him ahead of Zadruna Saviskas. Big points there. Peter Rumberg in fourth place. Jitz Kramer in fifth. And we have a number of athletes all managing three bags. But only two of the athletes getting that big 350 pound bag at the end. And wow, I mean, uh, Heinlad needed to make up some points after the farmer's walk and inching out. Big Zadruna Saviskas there at the very end on that final bag is exactly what he needed. And Rauno has always known that the farmers was going to be his weakness. The problem when you've got a weakness like that, you've almost got to come first or second on every other event. And he's doing that. Won the deadlift in the last event. He's just had a second place here. But look at Webb. That time, untouchable with the bag. Still not close to Andrew Clayton's time, but... <laughs> I mean, that is elite, elite world-level strength displayed by Clayton. I don't know many win. people that could have been close to that time, and I'm talking about the absolute elite yes. from World's Strongest Man. Yes, I agree 100%, but just incredible feats of strength. And Matt Webb looking so rhythmic and making those three bags seem identical. Our men's over 40 division, Big Z in first place, 31 and a half points. Yitzi Kramer and Rauno Heinle tie for second, 27 and a half points. Dimitar Savatinov and Matt Webb tie with 25 points. Romek Velt in sixth place with 20 points. Danish Repsis, 18.5 points. Washington Flores, 17 points. Tim Phyllis and Peter Ronberg tie with 14 points. So Zadrun is where he wants to be, but he's not too far ahead of Yitz and Arauno. In striking distance for both those men chasing after Big Z. Dimitar looks like he's in pain, so... We'll see how, if he can kind of cause any trouble for the top few. But Matt Webb, he's been impressive, and I know he's got some good events to come as well. And Matt Webb is not showing any signs of fatigue or strain. Not at all. He looks good. He looks primed and very chipper going into these, these final events. In, in fourth position there, and we're already moving on to the men's 40-plus category. Hopefully we'll get the overall scores in a minute or two, but let's just focus our eyes here on this pair. It is Tim Felis against uh, Dinas Repsis of Lithuania. Tim Felis pulls ahead. Very incredible to see Tim finish in such fashion. Tim unfortunately sustained a pec tear early on in the competition on the Viking press. But he has persisted all the way through to the finals and is moving quite well still in the midst of injury. So our over 40s gets underway with uh, a good battle there. Tim Felis of the US, Repsis of Lithuania. And it's really quite a um, smorgasbord of uh, international countries in this I one. I love it. We have uh, America, Lithuania, Estonia, Bulgaria. A Dutchman, a Swede. Sounds like the start of a good joke, doesn't it? But uh, I don't know where we're going with that one. They all walked into a bar. <laughs> they all walked into a bar and, and uh, a trio of Americans. Tim Phyllis, the leader of this event. 14.25 seconds so far, setting the pace for everyone yet to come. In the heat number two, Washington Flores of the USA in lane one. And Romek Velt of Estonia in lane number two. Flores already in and prepared. Velt gets in and down now. Aaron West to get them underway. And Flores really making the running here at the moment. The American Washington Flores ahead of the Estonian Romic Velt goes down though. Could this be Velt's chance? Flores doesn't think so. That one drop is critical in overcoming the leader, Tim Phyllis, just biting down behind him and throwing him back. But such a big man with equally big power. That 900-pound vehicle is no match. <laughs> well, we've got a couple of uh, fan favorites in the next pair. Dimitar Savatinov. Who isn't a Dimitar Savatinov fan? That's what I want to know. Up against Yitzi Kramer of the Netherlands. 
as we look back at the run by Romick Velt, 20.00. And uh, Washington Flores as well in uh, a tough, tough battle. 408 kilos on the back. Washington Flores finishing with a time of 17.65 seconds, three seconds behind Tim Phyllis. Dimitar Savatinov. It's great to see the mighty Mick go back in action, looking like he's feeling a bit of a strain after the previous events, but he is an excellent yoke walker, a very strong big man. He has that circus strength background, and watching a car being carried on someone's back does fall in line with a spectacle. I think we're going to see some impressive things here if he can tune out whatever pain or strain he is feeling. Well, there's Dimitar. He's um, a neck model on the side. He's <laughs> he's, he really has no neck, Dimitar. Well, uh, what, what neck? <laughs> Just muscle. He is so uh, muscle extraordinarily and muscular in uh, the trapezius and uh, upper back. But this weight shouldn't be a problem. But do, do the old legs still move as quick as they once did? Let's have a look. Yitzi Kramer on the far side, bullying this uh, car into position. And he's in the lead at the moment. The Dutchman, the Flying Dutchman, heading towards the line. Finest his time of 14.25. I think is going to be beaten. And he scares the <laughs> life out of the crowd there. I'm not sure he uh, read the rules properly. It's only the front of the car over the line. And Sabatinov, a good time. But uh, in comparison to Kramer, it's uh, second place at best anyway. <laughs> the Dutchman did not want to stop there. <laughs> he was having fun, huh? He was. You know, it was a fun day when you get to walk with a car on your back. But he, our new leader, Yitzhak Kramer, 12.56 seconds. Well, the two cameramen he was going for, Romark and... Uh, Auntie Liz, <laughs> giving them a scare. And he, testing their reaction speed there. <laughs> Indeed. It's, uh, he crosses the line just there. That was a little bit excessive, <laughs> to say the least, but he was, he was in uh, full flow, so why not? 12.56 for Yitzhi Kramer then. He is our event leader at the moment. Three pairs out of five have gone so far. Next up, it'll be Peter Runberg of Sweden up against uh, the Lithuanian sensation, the GOAT. It's Big Z, Zadruna Saviskas of Lithuania on the far side, looking hair suit and handsome in the over 40 category. And then it'll be Heinle against Webb to finish us off. I'm liking this bearded Z. It, he looks good. I think uh, there may well be a Just For Men sponsorship <laughs> somewhere <laughs> along the line. <laughs> I'm just amazed quite how silver-free it is. That's what I speculated on yesterday. <laughs> a legend in many ways. <laughs> I'm sure you would chuckle at that one. So, uh, Runberg, nearest to camera. The great big Z on the far side. Slow and steady. Z never looks like he's doing anything that quickly, but it'll surprise you quite how quick this is. Could this be the leader? 12.56 to beat. He accelerated nicely there. I think Kramer still has the lead, but not by much. Z definitely moved well. And even if it doesn't seem fast in camera, he is a very tall man with very long strides. Very high in his back there, Peter Runberg. And uh, maybe not getting quite the control you would want with the car. Uh, the way he was uh, gripping it, but he gets it over the he line. Gets it done. Gets it done. <laughs> whatever, whatever works for the individual, we are all built differently. And there is uh, Big Z with a time of 14.56 seconds. That puts him in, I believe, a third place finish on this event. We will get the official confirmations when the scores are posted. And there's Big Z showing you how to walk in slow motion, but that is actually full motion for Big Z. <laughs> full motion, <laughs> gliding ever so gracefully across the screen right there. <laughs> it was once asked, <laughs> why do you move so slowly, Big Z? <laughs> and his answer was he likes to fool everyone into thinking he's slow. And then of course, he pounces into action, and he really does. You ever watch the Drunas throw ke a keg toss? It's one of the most ex explosive and powerful and quick things you'll ever see. I got to see that in person at the Shaw Classic this year. Not with kegs, but with sandbags. And Big Z likes to send objects to space, I tell you that. He's the original two in the air at the same time, man. But uh, we have one pair to come here then in this Masters 40 plus. It's Rauno Heinler of Estonia against Matt Webb 
of the USA. And there is Raul Ohinder, the uh, Masters deadlift record holder set in Cardiff earlier this year. Webb on the far side, Matt Webb. And it's Heinler, the uh, well-known international name who gets away ahead of Webb. But Webb is really pushing Webb him here. Passes him a drop, costing him the lead over Heinler. Well, Matt Webb, a class act there, holding his nerve against a, a seasoned campaigner in Heinler and managed to uh, go past him at one point and perhaps just wanting it a little too much. Heinle needed to make some points. 12.41 seconds, Colin. Where does that stack up? I'm not absolutely sure. We're going to have to wait for confirmation, and we're going to get it in just a second here as we look back at this uh, slow-motion replay. Quite a uh, not particularly deep pickup from Raul Heinle. He was risking it, wasn't he? He managed to get away reasonably quickly, but it meant risking he had it. to really hold the car in position. But Heinle was very hungry to make up some points after yesterday's farmer's walk, and a man who always has his eyes on the top spot. So when he's against the midst of Big Z and even Matt Webb, here we have it. So here we are, our car work for the over 40s, and it is Raudo Heinler who gets the win there ahead of Yitzi Kramer by 15 hundredths of a second. Matt Webb in a very impressive time as well. The 1366 gets third position. Phylus 14.25, fourth place, and the Big Z gets fifth position just uh, three tenths of a second back from there and Dimitar he rounds out the top six half a second behind his old foe Zadrunas and uh, further on down Peter Rundberg 31.16 seconds had a couple of stumbles and not the best run for him the rest under 20 seconds or or at 20 seconds for the top nine so we move on to our final category Look at this. Oh, Rauno has made it to the top. Tied with Big Z in the overall standings after event five. This is what Rauno set out to do, and he has done just that. But two events remain. Can he keep that lead against one of the greatest of all time, Big Z? So with Yitzi right behind by only one point. After five events, then, it's at 37 and a half for, for Zaviskus and Heinler. Equal first. Kramer in third position. One point back from there. Webb. Still within striking distance, three and a half points back from the podium at the moment. And Savatinov, I think it's fair to say, with uh, the likes of Dumbbell to come, and he is a master at the Dumbbell. Uh, certainly had the world record at one point, did Dimitar. He sits in fifth, so striking distance, uh, to say the least. Two Estonians, two Lithuanians, three from the United States, one from Bulgaria, one from Sweden, and one from the Netherlands. Real mix. Real mix indeed. Both men meeting their match on this dumbbell series. Up next we have, all right. So our 105 standing after the dumbbell ladder, we have Andrew Clayton on this event with all four in 32.97 seconds. Nicholas Hine, Frank Provenzano, both finishing their three dumbbells in under 20 seconds for a second and third place finish, respectively. Matthew McKeegan, three dumbbells in 23.6, and Alex Sukup, three dumbbells in 26.6. Justin Lyon, ninth place. Dropping down, that's going to give Clayton a big he lead. To be. We'll come right. back to the overalls in a second, but we Flores move on. versus Repsish, USA versus Lithuania. Repsheesh needs to get that dumbbell on his platform. A little bit of leniency. Easy press. He's being told he's got to take that dumbbell back. Oh. Washington Florida is falling a bit shy of lockout. Repsheesh look powerful on these dumbbells. Very nice. Repsheesh has the Lithuanian shoulder strength that we've seen in his brothers like Big Z himself. So many fantastic Lithuanians over the last 10 to 20 years in the sport. There's got to be something in the water over there. The problem is, for whoever was Look at that. Two all in Lithuania, four. There was always a Drunas over the last 20 years. <laughs> but Repsi doing all four dumbbells there. 220 pounds goes up. And we only saw one of our under 105s manage to do all four of these weights. So that is an impressive lift right there. Lithuanian, 
fist bumping the other Lithuanian, the big man, Zadrunas Aviskas. Two big men in this heat. Steps up to lane number two as Dimitar Former Savatinov. Former dumbbell world record holder, this Dimitar Savatinov. This is going to be great to watch the Midco operate on. These two the in record. their prime would have been incredible to watch on this event. Yep. Unfortunately, I know Dimitar is nursing a few injuries. He's worried about this event. And Zadrunas, not the man he once was when it came to the overhead, but he's still dangerous. Dimitar moving fast on that light dumbbell. Zadrunas almost strict pressing that first one. Well, Dimitar Zydrunas. moving fast. Oh. Dimitar quick through those first two. Look at this. Look at this by Dimitar. What injury. He was telling me he's going to struggle on this one. Zadrunas gets the good lift on the third. But Dimitar is on to the 220, and he gets it down Dimitar. signal. Dimitar. Did he not get the down signal? I thought I saw it. Well, either way, and here Zydrunas these guys has had go. time to catch up. Dimitar gets it. Zadrunas balances the 220 pound double. He can't get it, though. Wow. Dimitar absolutely shredded those first three. So close on getting that first attempt on the 220. But he came back and got it done. He did. He was walking off in pain, limping off there, grimace on his face. But he blocked out that pain, and he managed to get through all four dumbbells. Zadrinus, only three, opening the door to the other competitors. Now here we have heat number four, Tim Phyllis and Matt Webb in lanes one and two, both Americans. Tim Phyllis has a torn pec, so we can expect that might not be using the side that's injured. And it's worth noting that back in the day at Strongman Corporation Nationals, Tim Phyllis wanted me to announce on the live stream, he did beat me at something. <laughs> so <laughs> he wants to wear that badge of honor, but he has been showing nothing but grit all weekend long. What did he beat you at? I, I can't remember. It's bad, <laughs> I, isn't it? I don't it know if like I want to remember. I locked that memory <laughs> away. But Phyllis versus Webb. Webb has been showing no signs of weakness or fatigue over this entire weekend. Just shy of that lockout. I've been very impressed with Webb this weekend. Me Real too. solid performer. There we go. Good rep. Phyllis gets the dumbbell as well. 200 pounds now for Webb. I think Phyllis is going to call it there. He knows his body is not ready for what comes next. But Webb lining up the shot. 200 pounds. Leg drive. Oh, he had it there. Just could not lock it with the support. He's going to leave it there. You know, the circus dumbbell is one of the most murdering exercises you can do on the shoulder. It's demanding so much power from just one arm. The dumbbells are, it's one of those events, when you hit it right, it's almost like poetry. It just kind of looks so effortless. But you get it slightly wrong, and it's completely different. And then you're left with an aching tricep for three <laughs> months. But well, in my case, many years ago, a torn labrum. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a... Uh, it's a lot of strain for one single arm to do. But here we have Heinle and Kramer. our final heat. Heinle pulling ahead in the overall standings. Needs to do well here to secure his holding as the potential world's yes. strongest man Good through those 40. first two. If he can get a fast three, he'll be feeling good. Needs a fast three to go ahead of Zadrunas, and he gets it. Heinle. He's got time for this. to the fourth. I've seen him press 100 kilo dumbbells before many times. Can he do it at the end? Yes! Rauno. Rauno doing what he needs to do. Picture perfect. Showing us that he is more than a deadlifter, a oh, jack of all trades. Much more than just a deadlifter. And he's put himself in a great position now going into the Atlas Stones. What Kramer. a run by Heinle. So can we get a look at the overall for the under 105s and the Masters, please, guys? So under 105, overall standings after event six. Clayton with a strong lead, a lead to where he does not need to do anything in the final wow, event. Wow, he's already won as well. He has already won Andrew Clayton over Nicholas Hine. But and then, then Nicholas Hine. Very only exciting battle there. We've yes. Got. Anything can happen there for who takes second. So have a quick look at the Masters as well before we move on to our open weight class. That's the under, under 105 dumbbell ladder. And 
And here we have the results from the over 40s dumbbell. Rauno hitting all four dumbbells in 27.36 seconds. Dimitar, even injured, doing four in 36. Respis doing four in 49. And then Zadrinus Aviscus, fourth. What does that do to our overall? Rauno Hainlo in a three point lead going into the final event. Zadrinus Aviscus still dangerous. Jitz Kramer, 41 and a half points. And Dimitar Savatinov on 39 as we move on to our open class. All right, our men's masters class over 40. The likes of Rauno Heine, Zadruna Savikas, Dimitar Savatinov, all sit and wait at their chance at the six stone tower. The same weights that we saw in the 105s. Peter Runberg of Sweden in lane one in Washington Flores of USA, lane two. Runberg pulls ahead. That height definitely coming into an advantage here once he gets to these lower platforms. The weight gets heavier. Very large man, long arms. Wrapping around the stone ever so effectively. Just a little bit more. Get over that lip. Oh, he needs to be cautious here. He gets there it. it. Now, 10 seconds left. I don't think it's enough time for that 400-pound monster. Runberg, our current event leader after heat one. Very, very fulfilled to be done with this contest. Look at Clayton's replay right there. Efficient, fast, explosive, and strong. Looks like that stone got stuck to the ground a little bit, but this man has the back power to really rip it off the floor. That triple extension, just tossing it onto the platform. Look at those hamstrings just popping out, ready to lift each of these stones. Clearing that lip very, very easily. Hopping over a strong, strong grip. Launching it to tower. And even this 375, it looks like he extends that knee a bit too quick, turning, but we saw that that 375 defeated many athletes here. Wow, what a run from Andrew Clayton. But Evan, that 400 pound stone remains unlifted. Will we see it in this men's over 40 class? Well, considering the class of athletes that we have in the over 40, all the, all the names that you listed off, including the other names that are in this list, the top 10 strongest men over 40, I think, genuinely, we will see that 400 stone lifted. I Tim Phylus in lane one, taking a pause to cheer on his brother from the other side of the world, Romic Velt of Estonia. Tim Phylus tore his pec his chest muscle very early on in the contest. Pushed through as long as he could, but the Atlas Stones do involve the chest quite heavily, and he knows when to sit back and support his brother in strength. These, uh, these stones are looking really strong for Velt. Velt of Estonia. Countryman to Rano Heinla. Will we see it go? It needs more tacky or a more secure grip. He could benefit from getting his fingers a little further under the stone if you ask me. But he Deciding raises up his hands and he knows when it's done. It's great to see Tim Fidus out there showing support for his brother in strength. All right, we move on to our third heat. Danius Repsius of Lithuania in lane number one and Matt Webb of the USA in lane number two. There is some strength that lies in Lithuania. 
There's something in the water, Gabe. There is. And if I ever go, I'm going to make sure to find the nearest stream and just chug. Absolutely. Ro McVelt, five stones in 39.07 seconds. Matt Webb, a mountain of a man. Slightly towering over Velt. Long levers do play to the advantage of the athlete on the stones. Oh, I said Velt. This is Dinius Repsius of Lithuania. My apologies there. Repsius versus Webb. My goodness, it's almost like you've been doing this for almost 20 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been an absolute blast here at OSG. I am very much in my element and enjoying every minute. Getting some directions from Mr. Colin Bryce, El Wapo. And they are off. 275. First stroke. Stone looking strong for both these gentlemen. 300. Easy. Not a problem for these guys. 325. Not a problem on the left or the right. 350. Thrown onto the platform with authority by both gentlemen. 375. Lithuania inches ahead of USA. Webb getting a bit stuck. Will we see the first 400 pound stone? Dainius attempting the 400. Countryman to Big Z himself. Repsis attempting the load. The first man almost. Can he push it on? He gets it. And there it is. Dainius Repsis in the, in the nick, nick of, of time. time. Ripping his shirt open. Very similar to Hafthor Bjornsson whenever he would finish a <laughs> fast and powerful stone run. The first man to lift the 400-pound stone at the end of the series. But certainly not the last. Significantly impressive. Just on the wire of his teeth got it 59.99 seconds. It is physically impossible to get closer than that. One hundredth <laughs> of a second in the nick of time for Repsis. Absolutely amazing. That is style points if I have ever seen it. Incredible. The mighty Mitko, Dimitar Savatinov of Bulgaria in lane one, and Yitzi Kramer of Netherlands in lane two. I've actually had the pleasure of competing against Yitzi over in South Africa, and I have to say his deadlift is through the roof. That's definitely going to have a lot of carryover into this event. There is a lot of deadlift power in South Africa. Kramer, Vanderland. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just yeah, another place where there must be something in the water. There's got to be something in the water. I guess there's something about being close to the uh, North or South Pole. <laughs> Whether it's glacial melts or a shift in the gravitational flow. There's something there. We might need to take some notes and <laughs> plan a trip. Yeah, let's plan a trip. I want to go. I want to go. It's a I long plane flight yeah. to South Africa. Yeah, believe me. That, you that know. Was, it was a 16-hour flight when I flew over there. That was not pleasant. All right. Savatinov versus Kramer. Dimitar feeling a bit of a groin injury sustained earlier in the contest. Still making a run at the stones. Ah. Uh. Yitzy's One motions height. it. Yitzi's height just helping him thrust that straight onto the platform. No issues at all. Dimitar gets one stone, and I'm betting he's succumbing to the strain in his groin. It's a smart move on his part. You don't it want is. To push that any you know, he is just making his way back into the competitive sphere, and we don't want to cut that short. Absolutely it's so not. good to see him here. Absolutely. Kramer on to the 375. Making it look easy. I think we have it here. Pounds Channeling the power of the crowd. Very easy pick. And there it Our is. Our new event Walker. leader, Yitzi Kramer of the Netherlands. That was a very, very efficient time. That's going to be hard to beat, even for the best athletes in this class. You know, Yitzi Kramer. The Netherlands, Northern Europe, 
I'm telling you, something near those glaciers and fjords, there's just power lurking there. We need to take advantage of that, man. Yeah, we need to find out what's in the water, and we need. <laughs> Apparently, I'm getting a bit too geographic talking about glaciers at a strongman contest. I'll, I'll keep that under control. Yeah, you might want to turn that down a bit. <laughs> but when we talk about lands full of mountains and rocks, these guys are surrounded by stones their entire life. Heavy lifting is nothing foreign to these men. And... Here comes Big Z himself. The man that needs no introduction. Arguably one of the greatest of all time. Referred to by many, many people as the GOAT. But against Rauno Heinle of Estonia. A lot of European representation here in our Masters men over 40. And honestly, guys that are still competitive in the open category as well. I mean, not too long ago, we saw Rano in the Giants live competitions. And he, he was won the World own. Deadlift Championships, pulling the highest deadlift in Cardiff only months ago. Point proven. And I, I believe I still have a desktop background of Big Z pulling a <laughs> world record Hummer tire deadlift at the Arnold some several years back. I mean, these men are powerhouses and no stranger to Atlas Stones or finishing so shows in style. <laughs> Who can get these stones the fastest that will determine Heinle. the letter? That deadlift power coming into play, but Big Z inches ahead, determined to lead. Only three points separate these men going into this final event. Zadrunas showing why he's the GOAT. On to the ahead. 400. Can he beat Yitzi Kramer's Big time? And he Z does. With the power shelf of a midsection, aiding the lift so effortlessly to tower. Heinle on the way up. Just One a little bit of a though. slip. Rauno to the lap. Even loading this is big points for Rauno. Come on, Rauno. He needs it. Throw it up there. There it is. Oh, oh a slip. That's a costly, costly drop. But we'll have to see where the official scores lie. Big Z. Finishing very fast. Stepping away from the platform and being embraced by fellow World Strongest Man winner Martins Lisi's. Martins, hailing originally from Latvia before becoming a uh, representative of the United States where he currently resides. Latvia neighbors Lithuania and Estonia. Very much feeling a sense of brotherhood to his brothers in strength on the other side of the world near his homeland. And here we have it. Wow! Wow, a tie. Sadruna Saviskas and Rauno Heinle tie for first place with 54 and a half points, but the tiebreaker is the man who does better on the Atlas Stones, and that is none other than Big Z himself. Big Z, the strongest man in the world, over 40. Plenty of world titles lie in this man's trophy case. Rauno Heinle, a very, very close finish. Tying Big Z, but falling onto that second place podium platform. Yitzhak Kramer of the Netherlands will take third. And Dimitar Savatinov and Matt Webb tie for fourth. Wow. It's, it's something else when you, you have a tie wow. after the last event. But it is the last event, the finale. And Big Z came out on top. Absolutely. Big and Z came here to do one thing, and that's what he did. He I, won. I would say he came here to do two things, to win and to showcase this glorious new beard he is sporting that doesn't I have an know. ounce of silver in it. Oh, my goodness. How does he do it? You How know, does he do it? Somewhere uh, in the mountains of, of Latvia, he has to... Or not Latvia, Lithuania, excuse me. Talk he's, about the glaciers. <laughs> talk about the glaciers. There's got to be something in the water when he goes for his dips every morning, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Big Z showing us he is still a tremendous force to be reckoned with and inching away ahead Heinle, finishing in style with that stone run, but... I'm not surprised. Big Z clearly still has what it takes.
your top 10 masters in the world in the 40 plus category, everyone. In 10th place, representing Sweden, Peter Rudberg. In ninth place from the United States, Tim Phyllis. In eighth place from the U.S. of A, Washington Flores. In seventh place from Estonia, Romek Velt. In sixth place from Lithuania, Danius Repsis. In fifth place from Bulgaria, it's Dimitar Savatinov. In fourth place from the USFA, Matt Webb. In third place from the Netherlands, Yitzi Kramer. In second place, representing Estonia, Rano Heinle. And your world champion is the Masters 40 division that now makes his seventh World Strongest Man title. From Lithuania, Zadrunas Zaviskas.